Hey everyone, I have another video for y'all today. This is a 2016 Kawasaki Brute Force that I picked up. I actually picked up one, another one just like it, but in white. Uh, both of them got a little front end damage on them. I don't know if you can see. It is a little bent in. This one's not too bad compared to the other one. But uh, both of them need carburetor work. This one, they both came with new batteries, uh, but uh, I can try to start it. It'll probably just start and stall. Let's see. So it'll run with the choke on. Let's try turning the gas on here. Or we'll put it on. Yeah, it's on reserve. And nothing. So. Go ahead and turn this back off and we'll go ahead and pull the seat off and take the air box off. Set that right over here. And let's see what we got going on. So usually when I get them, you know, I like to look in the air box and just see if there's a bunch of gas or anything. Uh, there might be a little oil or something right there. But um, overall, not too bad. But let's see. So, get the carburetor off this one. I think we're gonna. I might go ahead and try to pull the tank off. Let me see. I'm gonna unscrew these four screws, and then I'll undo these two tank bolts right here and get that out of the way. All right. I was gonna undo the fuel tank. But it's actually easier. I think I'll be able to get it out from the side here. So you'll need to take this off. It's just a Phillips head. And it pops off. And I'll probably take the air box off. It's two 10 millimeters. And then just the hose clamps. In here. i do the hose clamp. And then it's very bike's not old and the rubber on the clamp will be easy to pull off. And we're going to do... You have to undo this air intake going into the air box. Uh, it should be the Phillips head just right here on the side. If your bike's hot, be careful not burn yourself on the exhaust. Breather. Let me see where this one runs. That one runs right there. And just pry it out of there. And then you'll have better access to the carburetor. Head. Both of these clamps should be Phillips head, but someone must have messed with it and put a regular clamp on it. So once you get that off, you're going to want to undo this, this Phillips head right here. If these are stripped and you can't get it off, you get a pair of ice grips and clamp them on there. I have to do that sometimes. I'll probably have to, I might have to do it on the carburetor bowl, but we'll see whenever I get to that point. So you'll get that off, and that's your throttle, that's where your throttle linkage is. Uh, see, so I was wondering why this one was running it wide open. It's because the throttle cable stuck, so I must have not put it in back in correctly. Pull it out like sometimes they're a little stubborn. There you go, just like that. And then your cable, it might be threaded up here, but this one just pops off to the side. 
and then the only other thing you'll have is your choke right here and that's going to be either a 12 or a 14 milliliter all right so most of these choke levers on this style carburetor are going to be a 12 millimeter um, sometimes they're a little hard to get in there you might just have to get some vice grips or some needle nose that are pretty strong and just try to turn it with that might have to go get some here too there's like a little rubber boot on here too you can take that off if you need to help you spin it Let my wrench go so on the ground there probably will be gas coming out of it whenever you're tilting it like this so if you don't want it gas on your ground or something go ahead and put something under it are a little stubborn sorry I know I'm blocking the view but I'll show you once I'm done all right so this right here is just a little plunger for your choke um, that's all that is once you get that, the only other thing you'll have right here is your fuel line. I might need to go get a pair of pliers here. You could take this off earlier on if you want to, just whatever order you want to do it, doesn't really matter. And that should be your carbon, this would be a little vent right here. You can either pop it off or you can take the whole hose with it. So let me go ahead and take this over to the bench and we'll open it up. All right, so we're on the bench. Like I said, you might have to get vice grips on these to open up the bowl, especially if yours has been stripped. But if you just put a bunch of pressure on it and then twist it, you're usually pretty good. Um, just don't, you have to make sure you put a lot of pressure on it, otherwise they will strip pretty easily. Most bowls have three, or most of them have four uh, Kawasaki, and some of the older Honda, smaller 200s have three. Uh, you can see it's fairly clean, has a little grime in it. It'll clean up pretty easy though. So you'll have a little needle right here. You can push that through. If yours is stuck, you might have to get a, a, a pick or something sharp to push it. And you can get some pliers and pull it through. Or you can maybe tap it out like that. And there you go. And this is just the rod that goes in there. Let's put that somewhere safe. It won't yeah, so my, you can see my, all the grime here on the needle. This came out of there, but all of, all that was keeping fuel from flowing into the carburetor and it had the needle stuck. Gotta be careful pulling these out if you plan on reusing it, but I'll just set that to the side. And you'll either have two or three jets in here. Um, all of them are gonna be flathead. Uh, let me grab the flathead. So this one down here in the bottom, this is going to be the hardest one to get. You want to make sure you have the right size screwdriver on it because you only get one good chance of getting it. So put a bunch of pressure on it and rotate. I don't think this one's quite biting, so I don't want to strip it, but we'll go ahead and get this one. All right, so I got a screwdriver small enough and I put it in there and twisted it with the vice grips because I could get a grip on the small screwdriver. But just make sure your screwdriver fits really good. This right here is your low speed idle jet. So if your bike's having trouble idling, this is the jet you wanna definitely take a look at. Just like I said, be very careful because they strip extremely easy. You can see what it looks like. We'll go over them in a minute. And you can undo this top one right here. Try not to get this one confused with that first one you pulled out because they're both pretty similar. Oh, they're not exactly the same, but they're similar. And then uh, this this uh, this one right here is just a wrench. It should be eight millimeter on most Japanese bikes. 
and this is your high speed jet and you'll have to look through the holes you might not be able to see but on, these are clogged so uh, let me take all this over into the shade and we'll start taking a look at it all right so before we look at the jets we're gonna go and take a look at our carburetor bowl look at your seal make sure it's not dried out if it is or you accidentally tear it removing it right now then go ahead and order a new one. It should come with a carb rebuild kit with all new jets and everything, so you don't have to worry about cleaning them. But I'm just gonna get this pick and just run it along the edge. This gasket should be good as long as it doesn't tear on the way out. You can see it's still pretty rubberized, but you're gonna wanna take that out because the carburetor cleaner will sometimes stretch it. And um, we're gonna go ahead um, and get some carb cleaner and I will spray this out real good. All right, if you don't get this on your hand, if you don't get carburetor or brake cleaner on your hands often, then uh, I'd recommend putting gloves on because it will burn if you're not used to it. So you guys go ahead and spray a good amount in there. If your carburetor is really bad, you're gonna wanna soak it in a, in a carb cleaning dip or um, put it in an ultrasonic. Scrub it out real good. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off camera and I'll come back whenever I'm good. All right, so we got our car bowl cleaned out. You just wanna slide the needle off of the float like that and just go ahead and get your float nice and clean. This one's pretty clean. This has a little bit of grime on it a few spots but, um, that's all it needed and now you're gonna want to focus on your needle you see how it's a little bit dirty I'm just gonna get this pick and just scrape it and get it nice and clean if you if you have a carburetor rebuild kit then it should come with a new one of these you don't have to worry about cleaning none of these jets or anything this is just if you're uh, if your jets and all that's reused and your needle and seat is all reusable, then you can do this. So you got that all clean and then spray it off. Try not to hit too much on the rubber, rubber tip because it might, the carburetor cleaner might have an, some sort of effect on it. Uh, next, you want to want to clean the seat. The seat's right here. Some carburetors are removable seats. This one's not. So what I do is I just spray a little cleaner in there. And then get your uh, your drill and put a piece of in it. And don't tighten it too tight or it will break it off. But you'll just go ahead and put this inside here. And spin it for a little bit. And just polish it up. stuff is coming out of there go ahead and spray it and let's go ahead and spray on all these ports and then you get your air compressor and just blow it all out cover watch your eyes So you got a brush and this is uh, this is the main jet right here so just go ahead and kind of get all the grime off of it and clean it off good and then we're gonna go ahead and take the main jet out of the motion tube and you can you probably can't see very good it is a, it's pretty open but it is a, just slightly clogged um, so just go ahead and run it through this wire brush just go ahead and pull you off a piece like right here and just clean it off real good Make sure there's nothing 
inside here. It's gonna clog it up. And then just go ahead and blow it out with some carburetor cleaner. And then blow it off with the compressor. And then what I do is I usually go ahead and slide it right back into the motion tube like that. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and do that same thing with this wire brush and just run all these, run it through every hole. Even if it looks clean, just run it through there anyways. Cause you never know, it might just, it might have a little something in it. And it doesn't take but a second to do it. So I did that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this end and blow this carb spray in here. So it'll spray out, you should see it spraying out of all the holes. Just like that. You might not be able to see that good. But uh, if it looks clean, then go ahead and drop it back in the carb so you don't uh, confuse it with a different. And then just go ahead, snug that up. And that one should be good to go. And then we'll move on to this other jet right here. Uh, this, I think this is about the mid range jet. I uh, just want to do that same thing to it. Just go ahead and. I like to clean the ends off and then I'll run it through here quite a few times. Get it nice and clean in there. Make sure it has good flow. Spray, blow it out. And go ahead and pop it back in the carb so you don't lose it. Just want to run it right there on the top. Let's go ahead and tighten that back down. And the last one, this is the smallest one. This is the idle jet. And it is clogged. I'm not gonna, it won't, it's gonna be too hard to see on camera. But just go ahead and run this through if you can. This, this one's almost a little bit too big of a brush for it. But I think it might've just barely got it. If you don't have a brush big enough, just keep spraying it and blowing it out. Until it has a good flow, and blow it off. And you should be able to see it through there nice and clear. Um, I'll go ahead and drop that one in and snug it up. None of these need to be extremely tight or anything. Just do them, just snug them so they don't come out. Don't over tighten them because then you're gonna have trouble getting them out if you ever need to service the carburetor again for some reason, but hopefully you'll keep it clean this time. At uh, this time, we'll go ahead and slide this on to the bottom of the float. And that, that needle is gonna go right down into that hole right there. You're gonna wanna make sure it's nice and clean, otherwise you're gonna have a, a fuel leak. And then you'll just go ahead and run this pin right back through the carburetor like that. And then just flip your carburetor over and make sure the needle is going up and down nice and free, which this one is, so we're good to go. And then we'll go ahead and grab the oil seal here and get just a little dab of grease on your finger. Doesn't matter what kind of grease, just grease like that. And just run it all along this seal. This will kind of help reseal it again if you're using the old seal. And it'll also help keep the seal stuck in there so when you put the bowl back on, you don't, it doesn't fall out. So then you'll just go ahead and drop it in there. All the way around. Put my hands here. And then just wipe any grease that you, that might have, you might have smeared on the inside of the lip. I mean, if a little bit gets in there, it's not gonna hurt nothing. So once you have that, your seal should be held in there nice and good with the uh, grease. Go ahead and drop it back on there. And just make sure it's sitting flat and it's not binding with the carb bowl. And then you can flip it over and kind of feel that that float's going up and down in there so you know the float's not hung. And then you're just gonna go ahead and snug these all back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug these down and we'll meet you back over at the four-wheeler. All right, so we're back at the four-wheeler 
and uh, if you need if your fuel line and everything's hard to get to then go ahead and reconnect your fuel line right now Mine's not hard to get to so I'm just gonna go ahead and start assembling But you want to go ahead and I usually find it easiest to start with the choke lever uh, Where did it spring to? Um, I, th I find it easiest to start with the choke lever So you'll just go ahead and put it Back in there. It is plastic. So be careful that you don't cross thread it Just go ahead and spin it back in sometimes they're a little hard to start this one luckily went right on it's kind of unusual actually but we'll go ahead and just get it as tight as you can you don't want to, you do not, do not want to air leak right here or it will possibly affect how your choke works and your bike might not run correctly because your choke will be partially on so just get it pretty snug go ahead and pop that seal back on the end if you took yours off I'm gonna get some needle nose real quick. All right, so I got that lever back on, and now we're just gonna go ahead and slide the throttle linkage back into here. It goes right in that groove just like that. Then you're gonna use your, your finger here and push the throttle up so it takes the tension off, and your wire will, your cable will slide. Sorry, I know it's hard to see, but let me just snap it in there and I'll show you. So it'll snap into that groove just like that. And your throttle should be sitting on the idle set screw right there. So once you got it set like that, you can go ahead and put your cover back on. And screw it back together. These don't have to be overly tight either. All right, now once you got that on, go ahead and slide your carburetor back up into place and slide it onto the intake boot and make sure it sits on there nice and good. Then you'll wanna look at the back of the carburetor here and make sure that your carburetor is level so that your float sits well. And just go ahead and tighten it on up so it doesn't try to twist on you or anything. Get it nice and snug. And then go ahead and put your float drain back on the bottom here. Um, yours might have been, it might have fell off or it might not have, but I'll go ahead and pop that back on. And next we'll go ahead and pop the air box back in place. If you look right here, this is your crankcase vent. That needs to line up with this hole right here on the air box. That'll go right there. So just make sure that you get that connected. Um, and then your, your intake will go right there. So go ahead and slide it in. You might have to apply a little pressure. These boxes are made to bend, so don't be, don't be afraid to get on them a little bit to force them. Force them back into place. And then I'll go ahead and try to reconnect. The intake. These are always really hard to get to. Not sure why the manufacturers have to make them so difficult. Alright, there we go. So I got that. I'm going to go ahead and get my screwdriver and tighten it up. So it doesn't pop out unexpectedly. All right, next, we'll go ahead and enter here. And we're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure, just go ahead and slide your hose clamp back. And you just wanna slide this intake boot onto the carburetor. 
It can be a little difficult sometimes, but just be patient with it. And it'll pop on there. We'll turn it back on whenever we're ready. Whenever we get there. So I got the hose clamp back on the intake, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these bolts back in. Impact makes it easier. And then I'll go ahead and put the airbox lid back on. Oh, wrong one. But if you try to run it without the air box lid, it might mess up the air fuel mixture ratio. So if your bike's running bad without the air box on it, try to put the air box on and see if that makes a difference. And then I'll come over there and we'll slide our fuel hose back on if you haven't done it already. Just slides right on nice and easy. As long as your hoses aren't dried up. I didn't show this earlier, but the bolts just drop. They're hard to kind of hard to get to. But they just drop right down here in the bottom. And you can spin them on with the, your drill or your impact or whatever wrench you got. Get started here. Fight you a little bit. Let's try, try this side first and see. Maybe I can get one in. It'll help align the other. There's that one went right in. Let's see what's going on with this one. I'm gonna have to turn your wheel or something a little bit. that go on the back of the fuel tank. They just go right here. Get them started. And this cover, every bike's gonna have a little bit different cover on it. This is just how a Kawasaki does theirs. And then it has little snaps up here at the front. Kinda just got a feel for them. It'll, it'll snap in. Careful. And just slide that right on. Just like that. And then put the gas cap back on so you don't get any uh, dirt in your gas tank. And then we'll put the screws in the top there. have little snaps as well and let's take our Phillips head and be helpful if you had a I don't have a Phillips head on my for my impact at the moment so I'll just run these in by hand don't over tighten them they're just little clips just designed to keep the cover on so they're not gonna be extremely strong or tight and then we have, you have to turn your wheel to get to this one. And we'll have another one 
just like that on the other side. that off camera um, the only other thing you do is put your fuel valve on and you'll see inside of there it is slotted so it will only go on one way which it should be in the off position because that's how you turned it off so it should just slide right on there and most of the time the screws do stay in the top of it just like that or stay inside this hole so you just put it in there and tighten it up until You'll see the fuel valve will turn and that means it's tight so see it's tightening up nothing got to be anything crazy and then um if you haven't already go ahead and flush your tank and put fresh gas in it this one's good to go on gas um and then we'll go ahead and try to fire it up I'll turn the key on make sure your choke and your throttle are working smoothly before you try to fire it so it doesn't try to run away on you and make sure it's in neutral of course there you go now no choke Just your idle, your screw will be right there, or it'll be a flat head on the side of the car later. But um, that'll be it for this one. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all be a good day.